Just wrapping things up here at Harper Creek High School. What a fantastic contest. And for the second time this year, we got to see an overtime contest. Special teams play a part once again. Harper Creek, fantastic on the offensive side of the ball, but they could not pull it out, falling 26-20 to in overtime to the Coldwater Cardinals tonight. No, the early going, this game was flying by. Uh, not many turnovers, not many penalties, not many injuries early on, but we saw a lot more later in the game. Then Harper Creek's offense just slow, sustained, moving down the field, eating up the clock and getting points, and uh, it got them off to a 14 nothing lead. Uh, but then things changed. Yep, and actually two drives tonight for Harper Creek eclipsed the eight-minute mark. That's how good they were on the offensive side of the ball tonight. But Coldwater was able to crawl themselves back into this contest behind Matt Gipple, who had 214 yards on 20 carries tonight. He's had 354 yards uh, on the ground this year through six games. He was about two-thirds of the way of matching it tonight. Yeah, no, I mean, he just exploded, and that's why Harper Creek's early game plan was great because he was off the field and not able to do uh, what he did in much of the second half. And uh, so then things started to even up, and then, then things got wild in the fourth. Yes, it did. Actually, Coldwater had a chance to kill the clock. They were up 20-14, to 14, and... They had to basically just run two plays, but on a third down play, Gage McGuire rolled left trying to kill a little bit of the clock. A strip sack that ended up being a fumble that was picked up by Michael Crinion and brought back 56 yards to a touchdown with about a minute left in the contest. And then the extra point was missed, and it was 20 to 20 to head into overtime. Harper Creek had four cracks at the end zone, unable to score. They actually went for a field goal on fourth down and missed. Uh, on that opportunity, it was a botched snap and uh, couldn't uh, complete a pass in the end zone. And then just three plays later for Coldwater, Matt Gipple scored his fourth touchdown of the night. Yeah, just a memorable night for him, one he'll probably never forget, uh, yeah. even though there was some topsy-turvy weird stuff uh, uh, with Coldwater's offense and, and how little they were able to possess the ball in the early parts of the game. In the end, it all worked out for him. Coldwater gets the victory, and uh, Harper Creek comes up on the short end at home. Yep, Harper Creek is now 2-6 and six on the season. They finished the Interstate 8 conference schedule at 2-5. and five, And Coldwater finishes the I-8 at 3-4 and four this year. They are now 3-5 and five overall as they get ready for non-conference games. Speaking of Harper Creek, we will be back here next week, week number 9 of the high school football season. And it will be the second of two games this, uh, this upcoming week because... Yep. On uh, Thursday, we will make our way back to CW, CW Post Field, and it will be the fourth time that we see the St. Philip Fighting Tigers. They wrap up their regular season with North Adams, Jerome, and the Rams, who are fighting for a potential playoff spot in Division Two in the eight-man ranks. Yep, and uh, of course, uh, with our Thursday game and Friday game next week, of course, then after that, we will see where things shake out for playoff implications for uh, the city teams who have a shot at that, and we'll keep you posted with all that on 95.3 WBCK and here at 953wbck.com. Of course, all the scores from tonight's action, scrolling down below, we'll see how the Sydney teams did, and also see if the only undefeated team in the area stayed undefeated. And that's uh, scrolling down below. Of course, we'll see you next week. CW Post Field for St. Philip and North Adams Jerome, game one of two in week number nine here on 95.3 WBCK. Don't forget to download the WBCK app and follow all the high school football action right there.